Hi, uh, yeah, so I'm JD, um, and I work for, at Code for South Africa. So Code for South Africa is a non-profit organization, um, partly funded by sort of grants and, and donors, and partly funded by contracting. Uh, we, um, we run the, the CodeBridge organization right now, which is a sort of a space for bridging between communities and technology and so on. Um, and, um, but, but it's also sort of a movement trying to um, develop the civic technology um, sort of community. Um, and at Code for South Africa, sort of a concise way to summarize how we work is we use technology to promote informed decision making for positive social change. We're help, trying to help communities um, to be informed so that they can uh, be empowered and take charge of, of their development. Um, and, and sort of an important thing to mention about how we work is uh, instead of just being a contractor to government or to other NGOs, um, we try to be a, a partner in the projects. And that means we have some skin in the game. We, we really, really want projects to actually succeed. And we have a broader influence on how technology is used in projects. Uh, the first project I want to mention, and, and actually it's really nice to, to be able to say we're from the, the NGO and the, um, the private side. I think I'm saying a lot of the same things that Serena and, and Kate have been saying. Um, this project is a project uh, with very little to do about mapping and a lot to do about community resilience. Um, it's a project where um, Black Sash um, is um, helping uh, local communities to monitor uh, service providers, like government service providers. Uh, in this case, it's about social security offices that are supposed to uh, pay grants uh, for disabilities and, and people who don't have enough money to raise their children and so on. Um, now, what you see here is a, um, a, an example of a poster, and I've got some paper posters here. Um, each time a community uh, monitors their, their service provision, they, um, they feed the data back to, to us. Um, someone uses a Open Data Kit to sort of collect the data, and then we transform it into a nice way. We just present it in a, in a useful way that is com consumable by the community. And then we print paper posters, um, because people in these communities usually don't have access to internet. And we take the, the data that they've collected back to that community. And then that community is facilitated to, with government, figure out what are the most critical issues to, um, to try and approach in this monitoring cycle. Um, and they identify sort of who's responsible for trying to take those actions. And um, a year later, they perform the same monitoring again and see if those actions have had a, a useful impact. And that's been a, a sort of a model developed by Black Sash over quite a few years of trying to understand what's the best way to help communities to, to monitor their service provision and to, to track the, um, the, the quality. Um, and, and they've come out with a few very important principles. First of all, it must be the community doing the monitoring. And the community must have a relationship with the, the agencies that they are monitoring. Um, and then, when the community collects the data, uh, the data must go back into the community. Uh, it doesn't help that we collect the data and make decisions for them, because they are the only ones who really understand what the issues are. These aren't scientific surveys. They're diagnostic, light-touch surveys, just to, just to understand key issues. It's questions like, how long did you stand in the queue? How much did you pay for the, the minibus to get to, to this clinic or to, to get to this office? Um, did someone ask you for a bribe? Uh, were the staff friendly? So it's a, it's a broad range of questions. But this starts the conversation so that they can then start discussing with the, um, the government or with the agency uh, and understand the, the issues. And then they can decide for themselves in each community um, how, uh, what they need to address. So the, the impact on civic society here is that they are empowered uh, a lot of the time people survey communities, but they don't give the data back to them. And so crucially, the data must go back to the community, and then they are empowered and participate in developing solutions for that community. 
um, the response from government and their, their contractors is varied. In, in one situation with um, the, the grant payment offices, um, actually data from this uh, project was used in a lawsuit when the grant, grant payment contractor was uh, illegally taking deductions from people's grants, uh, which is shocking. These are the poorest people in society. But, um, but that was very successful. On the other hand, government and the contractors are actually quite positive uh, generally, and they're, they're participating more, and they're looking at how to make this part of their internal monitoring, which is really exciting. Um, technology here is really not the solution. It's a very, very small part. Uh, we're not the ones going out into the communities. Um, what we do is we help this to, to scale up. So we just provide the facilities. Initially, they were using a proprietary survey platform that was extremely expensive. Every change to the survey had to, uh, was an additional cost. Um, so we helped them move to, um, to FormHub and um, Kobo Toolbox and use Open Data Kit. Um, the, uh, the number crunching was done in Excel because this is an iterative process. We didn't really know what we needed until it was trialed and then expanded a little bit and trialed and expanded a little bit. Now we are beginning to make a website where the poster you can see that was done semi-manually before um, can be generated automatically. We're hoping in the long term this is going to be a platform where anyone can say, I want to do some community-based monitoring and I want these survey questions. I can pull some questions from there. Um, and we can start our monitoring process. Our monitoring period will be annually and um, things like that. But we're only at this, reaching this point now. Uh, we, we've used a lot of existing technologies up until this point. Um, and that's largely how we work. Instead of building this big platform for everyone, everywhere, before we really understand the problem, we try to, um, we try to do as much as possible with existing tools. Excel, open source surveying software, and so on. Technology can be damaging to a project. Um, it can be distracting from the main problem you're trying to solve. Um, and it can be very, very expensive if you're using something with, with a business model that doesn't work the way you need to work. Another project I want to talk to you about is um, about toilets and basic sanitation in informal settlements. So this is roughly what informal settlements look like in South Africa. They're usually slightly outside the cities, which means expensive transport costs, uh, very bad uh, infrastructure. You can see some power lines and so on that, that get put up initially. Now, um, people usually live there, hopefully, before they move into permanent accommodation. But some of these informal settlements have there, been there since the end of apartheid, since the beginning of our democracy. Um, so that's about 20 years. And it's not really just about sort of a dirty toilet or a smelly toilet. It's important that toilets work and that especially people with disabilities can have access to the toilets. But a lot of people don't want to go to the toilets outside their houses because, at night because they're worried that they might get robbed or raped or murdered. Um, so. We, we worked with a few other um, organizations on this project where we're trying to build maps of what uh, informal settlements exist, what uh, access to toilets do they have, and it was quite a challenging project. So here mapping was used to combine the data from a few different sources. Um, after a few access inf to information requests um, to government over many months because they were not really keen to provide us with this data, we received the, the um, coordinates of where they've built permanent toilets um, and the, the names and the, uh, of, of some of these settlements, but they, they refused to admit that there, there are any maps of where these things are. So we started drawing our own map by placing those sort of toilet positions on a map, taking satellite photos, drawing sort of diagrams around them, and then the government gave us, for each sort of location that we drew on the map, they could tell us what impediments there are to building better sanitation for them. Um, so mapping was really useful here to, to combine the data. But at the end of the day, the kind of information here, so what kind of toilets they are, um, and um, what, what the impediments are to, to building better sanitation, um, isn't really best viewed on the map. The map gives you sort of 
geospatial information. It can, you can spot a pattern to see there's a, an area that's extremely neglected here and not here. Um, but we move back to traditional ways of, of presenting this information with just um, sort of simple charts. Um, when, when, when you want to look at the sort of detail about a specific community. And like you saw on the other poster, uh, that poster goes back into the community. And that community, they know where they live. But what they need to know is the details of what's going on in that community. So there are two different views here. So uh, mapping is extremely useful um, for, for certain purposes, for putting things into context, understanding the, the greater context, understanding patterns and neglected areas. Also, it gives the community something to point to. Now, when they're interacting with government, they can say, this area, um, this is where the problem is, or this is where my problem is. Um, but it's important to know the audience. Again, this community doesn't have access to internet. Providing them with a fancy, um, flashy website isn't going to help them. Uh, we need to, to find a way to, to make this inf available to the community. So this, this isn't used. Uh, it, it hasn't been sort of rolled out completely yet. Uh, but we're hoping it's a, some way that the community will be able to interact with, um, with government and communicate better about what their needs are. Thank you very much.